keeper are standing up. That's what a reckoning sounds like. One of my favorite things about the series is that up to this point, it is very far removed from the mysticism that we know Star Wars for. And if you took the space travel out of it, it would actually function, you know, this could take place during the Cold War. When you were coming onto the project, what most excited you about that aspect of the story? Well, I think you're right what you say. You know, I think, Tom, when, when it first, you know, came out, maybe the world was, you know, flourishing and it was great to set a, a, a more cool world uh, you know on another future that we would be aspiring to now we're in plenty of chaos and it's fantastic to have a world that somewhere can offer us a bit of throw a bit of light onto our world you know where what are the strains and stresses of of any planet and or any planets and by saying planets you just expand our world into a planet i think the future is a very interesting prism to look at our present through um, it doesn't conclude anything, it just explores it, but it's a very good way of exploring it. So I was very excited um, to join this massive uh, spaceship of a, of, a, of a piece of work and to travel out with them into the universe. I really liked it. We know that Marva is Cassian's adopted mother and we don't want to talk about how they meet too much, but could you maybe talk about what Marva sees in Cassian during that first meeting and how that changes Marva's own uh, priorities? Well, she sees a very brave young boy who's in terrible danger. And I think, you know, she sees in him um, someone who also needs to be looked after. She sees in herself this, you know, rather ramshackling, squashbuckling pirate who goes around stealing bits of dead spaceships to recycle them with her husband. And maybe by meeting him, like in all great love stories, she meets someone who can also save her because to meet a young boy who needs to be looked after is to to take him back in her spaceship, is to love him, to ground him. But I get a, a feeling that they love, you know, she loved him on sight. The uh, relationship and the respect that develops between Jin Erso in Rogue One, the hero there, and Cassian points to something that Andor really makes textual, which is that women are an incredibly important influence on Cassian's life. How do you think Marva's perspective and role in Cassian's life puts him on his path to becoming the hero that we meet in Rogue One? Yeah, I mean, until you say hero, I mean, you know, Cassian is a bit of a mess. And I think that's a really good thing in this, that you, you get to meet somebody who is floundering a bit. And I think maybe, I mean, a psychologist might say that, you know, give me a child before he's seven and he's mine for life. Well, Marva only becomes, you know, Cassian's mother at 10. So he's already quite formed, but she has a huge influence on him. and. I think for all his um, distractions or his inability to ground himself, he has got a very good mother in Marva. And also that in the end, the value that Marva has offered him is the value that he sees as the good one. So I think she turns him into a better man than he might have become.